Back to school savings are officially in session at Tanger Outlets. Shop tax free August 2nd through 6th and save up to 70% off the latest school styles. The best of apparel, footwear, accessories, and more. Save at Nike Factory Store, American Eagle, Gap Outlet, Crocs, Under Armour, Banana Republic Factory, and hundreds more. There's always something happening. Discover the latest fun and events all season long. Tanger Outlets, your savings destination. Hello and welcome everybody to another episode of the After Buzz Podcast. My name is Nico Edjimian, your host of the After Buzz, and with me is Buzz Adams. Howdy. Howdy. <laughs> Pardon? Uh, hope everybody is having a good day. Today is Tuesday. Oops. That's not, it's <laughs> not Sorry. even, Today no, it starts with the same letter. Thursday, mm-hmm. July 18th. And uh, if anybody wants to reach out, talk to us, let us know your thoughts, you can message me at nico at klaq.com or buzz at buzz at klaq.com. Also, leave us some messages on our neckline. It's a voicemail that you can call up at any time of day and uh, let us know your thoughts on anything we've talked about here or on the Buzz Adams Morning Show. What's that number again, Buzz? That uh, number to call and leave a message anytime, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, is 844-805-NECK. 844-805-6325. All right. On today's episode of the After Buzz, we talk about sandwiches. Oh, okay. I know it's uh, I I was trying to think of a topic that would be near and dear to your heart. Yeah, like a good sandwich. Uh, You you were talking (laughs) about your, your, didn't you try and make sandwiches when you were little and replicate the uh, comic strip known as Blondie? There was a Mm -hmm. character named Dagwood who would make sandwiches so big you couldn't make your, put your. Dagwood was actually the main character you couldn't put your mouth around him yeah so he would just like stack up these sandwiches they'd be like four foot high and i used to go in and raid the refrigerator and i'd try just try and figure what's the most i can put on between two pieces of bread would all the ingredients make sense no 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 it was just i would pastrami and peanut butter and jelly yeah, could be. I might put some, like a layer of olives, just like green olives with the red pimentos in the middle. That might be in the mix. Whatever was in there, that's what I would make the sandwich out of. What would you say your favorite sandwich is as a grown-up? Or what attempts to pass I as a grown-up? I can tell you the Schlotzky's original on sour. What bread. is that, though? What kind of... I mean, it's just called the original? There's no... Yeah. You just go with the original at Schlotzky's? Yeah, so if you went around the world somewhere, you couldn't be like... Well, yeah, give me those Swatskis. I mean, th- that's not oh. a sandwich. I thought you asked me what my favorite sandwich was. I, I, I am. I'm asking you what's your favorite type of sandwich. A hamburger? <laughs> okay, yeah. I guess that's a, <laughs> I guess that's technically a sandwich. Uh, okay, bacon, lettuce, and tomato. Oh, all it, right. It's too much trouble for me to make. It's just you got to get the ingredients. And how often do I have fresh lettuce and tomatoes? Not very and often. And the time to make bacon. And to make the bacon, and it's got to have... A generous helping of mayonnaise and toast the bread, and there's nothing better than a good old BLT. Well, I'm happy to hear it because I actually have a list of 15 of the most popular sandwiches in the world. Reuben. These are worlds. That's another one. I like. Right. And BLT is actually number one. Yeah. Yeah. That's so a great sandwich. It's a good sandwich. BLT. Especially with the I don't, like the right tomatoes, like a good t- fresh tomato, mm-hmm. crisp lettuce. It's like an MLT, a mutton, lettuce, and tomato sandwich, especially when the mutton is cut nice and lean. Mm. Now, for anybody who's under the age of... Actually, no, that should be a movie that everybody sees. Princess Bride? Yeah. Billy Crystal's character? Great scene with Billy Crystal and Carol Kane. All right, let's get into sandwich history. The term sandwich, do you know where it comes from? The Earl of Sandwich? That is correct. John Montague, the fourth Earl of Sandwich. Okay, so An I 18th can... 18th century English nobleman, so the 1700s. Uh, he was an avid card player, gambler. and Those he are off... most verbatim, the words that I yeah. have here. And he did not want to get up from his seat at the at the gambling table. Correct. So he instructed one of his servants. Valets. His valets, whatever, to fix him a meal and put it between two loaves of bread so that he could eat without having okay so you got the sandwich in one hand 
You got your hand, uh, your card, in the other hand. hand. When you want to make a play, do you set the sandwich down and then play? Or Or cards down. Or cards down, take a bite. Or did he somehow manage to, did he have an extra arm, possibly? Hilarious. You almost verbatim, just your weird brain of knowledge, how it absorbs things. Uh, Oh, and and so people, uh, before... So we, you might Buzz and I do not talk about what we're going to plan. I didn't know you were talking about sandwiches at all. Like we never talk about what we're going. Usually we don't talk okay, about what so we're going to do. There, there was an island chain that was uh, colonized by the British, and it was the named, Sandwich Islands. It's the Sandwich Islands, which today are known as the Virgin Islands, the Hawaiian Islands. Really? Yeah. Oh no way! Mm-hmm. That's actually see Buzz's stupid brain. Well, he is correct. In everything you said. Wait, let me uh, check that Sandwich Islands thing. John Montague, the fourth Earl of Sandwich, uh, is said to have created it in 1762 during his gambling games. And uh, apparently it was very popular among all of his peers. Like his friends were like, dude, that is cool. I'm going to have my servants <laughs> make me a sandwich. Sandwich Islands was the name given to the Hawaiian Islands by Captain James Cook in 1778. There you go. I ran the table, man. Your stupid, stupid brain. Well, apparently the idea, though, of placing food between bread is not a new invention. It predates Matthew by a lot in different cultures throughout history. But his name is what we associate sandwiches with. All right, let's get into the list of the 15 most popular sandwiches and their history. Number 15, the panini. You a fan of the paninis? Uh, I don't know. I don't think I've ever ordered one. No, no it's like thin, so. it's usually thinner and it's pressed like press flat. Yeah, uh, I, I can visualize them, and I'm sure I've had them, but not not a particular fan. Well, they're, I, they're fine. They're Italian sandwiches made with smaller loaves of bread, maybe ciabatta or a baguette, that are sliced and filled with ingredients and then toasted. That's the big part. Paninis have been enjoyed in Italy for centuries, uh, but like even longer than the Earl of Sandwich. Um, probably about as long. Yeah. Uh, in Italy, it is still one of the most popular, uh, foods. And, uh, in in the United States, it became super popular in the 20th century. (laughs) Number 14, the Monte Cristo. Yeah. I don't know what that is. I I read the Count of Monte Cristo in high school though. Oh my God. Okay. Did everybody read the Count of Monte Cristo in high school? It, I've read it, but it was not a, uh, assignment assignment one. Yeah. Yeah. No. Everybody got way into it. Everybody's like, he's gonna I like, saw the movie. I love Guy Pierce. You know they did make a movie version of that. I saw it in theaters and I don't remember a single oh, thing about it. I think there's even there's multiple movie versions of it. There's probably sure, like a sixties sure. or fifties version. You know what's fucked up? My brother <laughs> older, right? Let me guess the Monte Cristo sandwich is a is best served cold, like revenge. <laughs> <laughs> Actually in a way you're kind of not wrong. It serves sweet, because revenge is sweet. Is sweet. Okay. My brother, uh, four years older than me, very smart guy, but every time in school it came down to read a book, he would go, they have a movie for that. And he would ask my parents to drive into Blockbuster so he could watch Rent the, movie the movie instead of reading the book. How did that work out generally? Probably it did work, I would guess. I think it got him through, because but not like top grades. What, what I... Okay, here's what you think in high school. And I struggled. I read all the book. If you pull something like that, the teacher's going to know because the teacher knows. The, no, the teacher probably did the exact same thing. thing. Yeah. You think they prepared that much? Teachers aren't any less or more lazy than students well, are. Well, you're just thinking, you have a famous story about this teacher who was a, a coach. And oh, that, good. Uh, when he, he would have the instructions and not even teach. Like, he would just say, read the book, here's the lesson, and then just sit He there. had the newspaper. He was reading the paper. We never saw his face. Unless somebody dared whisper or pass a note in his class. It was a, what the fuck? Yeah. Then it was like he'd go nuclear on you, but he was not even teaching. Okay. So the Monte Cristo is actually an uh, American version of the French croque monsieur. So it's a ham and cheese sandwich. But get this. It's basically French toast on the bun, the, the bun side, okay. our French toast. It's a ham and cheese sandwich dipped in egg batter and then fried. The sandwich is often served with powdered sugar and jam, giving it a sweet and savory profile. The Monte Cristo became popular in the 20th century in diners across America. 
it is one of my favorite sandwiches. It's honestly from the description, it does not sound like anything. I, I don't think I'd be a fan. You would absolutely be a fan I, of it. I do because have another guess. it is you don't you don't taste the sugar. It's not like a sweet thing, but when you put the jam and then you have the salty uh, ham and then the, and usually like uh, at Crave right here, uh, that's my favorite um, Monte Cristo because they include uh, stone ground mustard with it right next to it. So you put the stone ground mustard, the jam. So the discussion has unlocked my mind. I can now give you some other sandwiches that I really am fond um, of. Well, I'm glad we found a way through your dementia. <laughs> Grilled cheese. Oh, yeah. Is it on the list? It's got to be, right? No. Grilled cheese is not. No grilled cheese sandwich? No. Not just as a popular. I guess it's not the most popular. Okay, how about this one? Fried oyster po' boy. Yes, po' boys are on. Just, the, just po' boys in general? Yeah, just po' boys in general. Pierogies? How about, all right, number 13. Grinders? How about number Sliders? 13? Sliders? Let's get number 13. A lobster roll. The lobster roll is a New England specialty that consists of lobster meat served in a toasted hot dog style bun. It's believed to have first appeared in the 1920s at a restaurant in Milford, Connecticut. I had no idea that that's what a lobster roll was. Um, I There's two variations, main style with cold lobster salad and Connecticut style with warm lobster style, uh, warm lobster and butter. Now, uh, for listeners who might not have ever heard this before, I have an ex-girlfriend who used to live in Providence, Rhode Island. She was going to school there. Just pulled, down the road from Quahog, right? No, it is Quahog, basically. Mm -hmm. the, um, Seth McFarlane went to school at the place called the Rhode Island School of Design, or RISD, and it's a famous uh, design school. It's right there in Providence where my girlfriend was going to school as well. Anyways, we would take trips to Boston all the time, and uh, lobster rolls were on every menu to the point where McDonald's, had a lobster roll. I swear. What did they use instead of lobster? It was lobster. No. I got it. Chance. I swear to freaking God. But it was langostino crab. It, no. <laughs> no. No, it was lobster. I'm pretty. You know what? You know it's what? McDonald's. How are they going to sell it for like three or four bucks if it's real lobster? It wasn't three or four bucks. It was like eight or ten dollars. You know, or ten, first, or ten or twelve dollars. But, but remember, it wasn't being served in El Paso. It's being served in the McDonald's that are where they have it. Do you know when... Uh, are you the, I think the McDonald's in Japan... Sell sushi, even. I'm, I'm sorry. Go on. Lobster was originally considered food only fit for the very poor or prisoners. Didn't they call it the cockroach of the sea? They Somebody called it the cockroach of the sea, but it was generally not considered fit to eat for civilized folks. Have you ever had a lobster roll? No. Oh, I think you would really like a lobster roll. I was picturing like those little turkey pinwheels they sell at Albertsons. No, it's like, like a, a roll. it's like a hot dog bun and then the the crab, I mean not the crab, the lobster is cut up into and then like mayonnaise and something else and chives or maybe some uh celery. Am I alone in this but lobster's not that great. Lobster's not as flavorful as like shrimp or most fish. It's kind of bland, really. That's why you got to drown it in butter. Is that an unpopular opinion or one no, do you think? Correct, but it's delicious with butter. I mean, when what? you drown it in butter, right. it's still delicious. So, what's delicious, the lobster or the, the butter? Both. I think it's a combi a yeah. marriage of the two. Because oh, yeah. you could eat butter by itself, but it doesn't taste the same. All right. Next up, number twelve, the falafel. It's a sandwich with. Have you ever had a falafel? I'm sure. Okay. Pita bread. It's kind of like on pita. Yeah, it is on pita, and it has uh, deep-fried balls or patties from uh, ground chickpeas. Mm -hmm. Are you are you looking at my hand, Justin? No, no, right no, just the, the balls yeah. on your sandwich. Um, and it's a Middle Eastern uh, sandwich. It, it goes back to ancient Egypt, where the dish is called tamia, ta which was made with fava beans. Falafels are served in pitas with different things like tahini, fava beans, tahini, and a nice Chianti, hummus, some salad, um, and you know, it's everywhere. But and it's vegetarian. There's no meat in that. Wait, what are the balls made out of? The chickpeas. 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 Yeah. Okay. Or fava beans. <laughs> Number eleven, a po boy. Yeah. From Buzz's neck of the woods, since he's an official Louisianan. Yeah. 
Uh, it's basically fried seafood like shrimp, oysters, or catfish, or even roast beef served on French bread. All those would be fine. You'd be happy with all those. If you've never had one before, I recommend the fried oysters. Man, that's a good sandwich. Now, the origin's actually really interesting because the po' boy is said to have uh, originated from a 1929 streetcar strike during the Great Depression in New Orleans where a couple of brothers who owned a sandwich shop named the Martin Brothers uh, provided free sandwiches to all the workers that were striking and then called them poor boys. The sandwich became a staple of New Orleans cuisine. It's po' boys. Po and that's spelled P-O apostrophe boy. Uh, number 10, the muffaletta. <laughs> No, I've never heard of that before. No? Uh-uh. Um, it's a large round loaf of Sicilian sesame bread filled with ham, salami, mortadella, Swiss cheese, provolone, and a marinated olive salad. That's a big part of it. Wait, and all this is on bread? Mm-hmm. Huh. And it's a Muff Diver's Delight? What That's is it again? Muff Diver's Delight. What, what's it called? Muffalata. Muffalata. Number nine. The gi- I don't like muffalata, but I like a lot My of muff. muff. <laughs> <laughs> You're such a hack. All right. Number nine, the gyro or the gyro. It's- God, I remember when those were first kind of introduced. There was a fast food place that had the, but the pronunciation varied widely. Like you, there was no, there was no internet. So you couldn't find out what the authoritative pronunciation of it was. It was either Giro or Hero or Gyro or Giro. Or Hero. Right. Well, it's a Greek sandwich made with traditionally lamb, beef, or chicken that's cooked on a vertical rotisserie and then served in a pita with tomato, onion, and tzatziki sauce. All right. Let's go quick through it. Number eight, shawarma. I, I tried that, and the reason I did is because of Avengers. After they fight they the battle of New York, place. they go to get shawarma, right? And I was like, Did you like next it? time I'm... I didn't really care for it that much. Nothing other than American flavors for you, right? Like your next one. Number seven, Philly cheesesteak. Yeah, I'm... I don't know. That doesn't... That doesn't blow my mind like it does for some people. Oh, it's okay. interesting. Is it the cheese? Uh, it's, it's, it's okay. I wouldn't turn it down. I wouldn't turn my nose up at it. Number six, a bon mi. It's a Vietnamese sandwich. I've seen that on signs somewhere before, but you'd have to tell me what it is. Uh, it's in a, uh, a hot dog type of bun, and it has pork, uh, pickled vegetables, so cilantro. Hot dog is, we're, we're, we're pretty much establishing here that a hot dog is a sandwich. Yes. You agree? Because there are some people that would fight over that. Is a hot dog a sandwich? That's a good engagement between question. Between two breads. I say so. Mm-hmm. Number five, Cuban sandwich. <sighs> yeah, I don't know what that is. It's a pork sandwich, usually with pickles and tomato on a Cuban bread and mustard. Mm. And it's like flat pressed. No? No, nah, I don't think I don't think so. Number four, croque monsieur. It's a grilled ham and cheese sandwich. Sounds very fancy. <laughs> right? Probably everything sounds fancy. In French. In French, right? Number three, Reuben sandwich. Yeah, I like a Reuben. Um, French dip. Claimed to have been created by Reuben Kulofsky, a grocer in Omaha, New Br- in Nebraska. I believe it has sauerkraut on it. It does. He made this dur- supposedly during a poker game at the Blackstone Hotel in the 1920s. Following in the footsteps of John Montague, the fourth Earl of Sandwich. Corned beef, Swiss cheese, sauerkraut, and... Russian dressing. Yeah. Or- yeah, I like a Reuben. We used to have a kosher deli right on Mesa Street, and it was the only kosher deli in town, and they shut down like 20 years ago, and there are so many times that I'm just, I could really go for a Reuben and a matzo ball soup. Hmm. Number two, club sandwich. Yeah, what, what exactly is that? I mean, I've heard of them my entire life, and I'm sure I probably had them, but I don't know what makes a club sandwich a club sandwich. Usually multiple layers with another piece of toasted bread in between. So each one, it would be three slices of bread. And uh, usually it's uh, chicken, turkey, bacon, lettuce, tomato, mayonnaise. Do you know, I, I almost by default just throw away one of the buns if I get a sandwich. Like yesterday, my daughter wanted... Uh, we hadn't eaten out for a couple of days, and she wanted boss tenders. Oh, nice. And she gets the tenders. And I got 
the boss sandwich. Yeah. But it's just too much bread. Right, right. One, right. one bread is enough for me. So you took one of the breads off? Yeah, one of the breads just... And I would say we went in the trash, but I throw it in the backyard because I care about the birds. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, your number one sandwich, the BLT, yeah. the bacon lettuce tomato. Great. It actually has its roots tracing back to Victorian era tea sandwiches, where they only had simple ingredients like bacon, bread, and lettuce. But did you know the modern BLT became uh, really popular in the United States after World War II because advancements in agriculture allowed for tomatoes to be available to consumers all year, year round year round right that that's why uh you BLT have is, capitalism to thank for that for, by the, for way. the blt mm. that's it that does it for all your that favorite is the, sandwiches. that is the best argument against communism that i've ever heard of sandwich. communism never came up with a good sandwich <laughs> let us know your favorite sandwiches and if we missed any of them all right uh, that's again at Nico at KLAQ.com or Buzz at KLAQ.com. And keep listening to the After Buzz Tuesdays and Thursdays on the Buzz Adams Morning Show, Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. Talk to you next time. Back to school savings are officially in session at Tanger Outlets. Shop tax free August 2nd through 6th and save up to 70% off the latest school styles, the best of apparel, footwear, accessories, and more. Save at Nike Factory Store, American Eagle, Gap Outlet, Crocs, Under Armour, Banana Republic Factory, and hundreds more. There's always something happening. Discover the latest fun and events all season long. Tanger Outlets, your savings destination.